In a game like Hell at Loose, it's very important to have awareness. Anyone who's watched my videos for a long time knows I like to harp on awareness. But if there's one tool that gives you the most awareness and can help you a lot in battle, it is the map. A very simple tool that every class gets. And there are many little aspects about the map to know, such as how big the sector squares are, how to read the map itself, and just in general, what tools you can use at your disposal to maybe make your life easier for you or your squad. So if you don't know how to read the map or really utilize it to your full potential, well, we're gonna make sure that you are no longer the equivalency of Captain Sobel and understand how to use a map in today's video. So when you enter a match and you're looking to enter a squad and you're getting ready to spawn somewhere, you should see a map that looks like this. Now, I wanna just go over what you should see at the very beginning so you understand a couple little details that we'll probably be talking about throughout this whole video. So kind of just going through some basics here. So on the left side here, that covers most of the screen, you have the map, it's Utah Beach. On the top right, you have the spawn locations, you have the HQ sectors, the garrisons, outposts, etc. But at the bottom right, you have the map key, which we're going to touch on a little bit as we go through this video, outlining essentially everything that you can see on a map, which is very important if you really don't know what you're looking at. So now that you've spawned in-game and maybe you just joined the game maybe 20 seconds ago and just spawned in, it might be best to look around the map. So whatever you have it binded to or whatever key or button you have to access the map, go ahead and pull it up and you have a couple features down in the bottom left corner of your screen that for whatever buttons you have for the map, you can use to do a couple things such as move a cursor around, zoom in and out, pull up the map key, put down markers or access your marker screen, or just to exit the map entirely. Now that's just the way the map overall works, what you should see at first glance, and at least getting the feel for the map. Now let's actually break down the different aspects of the different maps that you'll see in game. So what I have in front of you here is St. Marigli's, the map itself. So just one example I want to pull from. Now if you notice the map has a bunch of different little features, both terrain features, maybe buildings, other little aspects. But the map is broken down into sectors and objectives. So let's start off with the sectors first. So if you notice this, the map is set up in a square grid fashion. All of these little squares are different sectors, and they have a letter and a number attached to them. And some maps you have it in a rectangular fashion, like this, where it goes more lengthwise, but then you have other maps like St. Mary Dumont that are more longways or widthwise, that go more north or south compared to St. Mary Glees, which is more east and west. Now, one thing I want to touch on is the size of the main grid squares. So, from one end to the other, they are 200 meters. And since they are squares, they're 200 meters all around, giving you at least a way to measure the grid squares. Now, the tag maps that you can find on the eTool page are nice, but they don't show you other things, such as that each of the sectors have little tiny squares inside of them too that are named as keypads, or at least that's the common name for them anyway. Now to break it down though, I will take another aspect from the Help Loose eTool Discord page, as they have a really nice picture that breaks down the keypad or grid square references. So it's looked at a couple different ways between console and PC. I couldn't tell you why, but at least this is the accepted thing that they have on there, so we're gonna go with it. So on console, you have it like a phone keypad, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But on PC, you have 789, 456, and 123. Now, the way this could be very helpful is maybe you spot something very important, like a tank or a garrison, but you get killed before you can ping it or ping it for your team or anything, just for communication's sake, and you want to make a good call out. Maybe you found a garrison and you got killed, but you know relatively where it was at because it was right by where you, d you went down at. So maybe, for instance, you tell your officer or you tell your squad that, hey, the enemy garrison's in sector C3, keypad 8. And that way you don't have to necessarily have a ping where you can really narrow down where it's at in a given sector instead of just saying, uh, garrison in the bottom part of C3. That could mean a couple different things, if we're being completely honest. So it's just a nice, easier way to potentially communicate certain events or important things to note of for the rest of your team and your squad. Now this could take just a little bit of time to get used to as, again, when you look at the little tiny details, this is definitely one of them. So make sure you talk to your squad or whoever about 
this type of method. That way, everyone's crystal clear on how you communicate. Now, the other thing I want to reference with the map is knowing where your objectives are. Now, any game will have, no matter what, five different objectives. But there could be a total of 15 different objectives that the game can pull from. Now, the game will pull one objective from each section of three across the entire map. As if you notice, they're kind of lined up a little bit in line with each other, to a degree, of course. The game will pick one of those objectives from each of the sections and will give you a game, whether that be on offensive or warfare. But I'm bringing this up because it's important to know when these circles are how they are, how they appear as circles. Because if you don't see these circles on the map, that means the objective is locked. That means nothing can be done with it, you can't take it, you probably shouldn't be defending it, or you can't defend it. Either way, look for these circles on the map to tell you which objectives are the current focus of what you should be doing, whether that be on attacking or defending. Now. Let's go back to that map key I was talking about earlier, because if you're a newer player and you're trying to learn all the little emblems and stuff, it might be important to note that. So by opening the map and hitting your key button, for me it's the right stick, I open it up and I scroll my cursor through just to show you, and if you actually go over any of the items, it'll actually give you a brief description in the bottom right corner. It's kind of hard to see, but you can rewind the video and watch it, but you can see that it was giving me items that talked about whatever I was over. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit and use the practice range here to give you a couple examples. So the quality isn't the best, I do apologize, it's just the best I can get for what I needed for this video, but it should still work out as it's still pretty legible. Now, say you want to know where your garrisons are, you're new to the game, you don't know what emblem it is. Well when you open up this key, you'll see that garrison is in the middle column at the very top. And you can look around and see, oh, okay, there's our garrisons. Maybe you want to know what tanks you have on the battlefield, whether that be a light tank, a medium tank, or heavy tank, which is towards the middle of the key. Or you want to know where your team and or your unit slash squad is. The unit members are in green, and the team members of other squads are in blue, also shown on the key here. So if you ever want to know what the emblems truly mean, this key has everything that you really need to know about the map in terms of what is what. Like I said, I'm not going to go through all of it. That's for you guys to figure out, but hopefully that gave you some help, at least on that front. Now that we've talked about the map and some basics of it, let's talk about the ping or marker system. So every person, whether you're an infantry officer, does have access to some sort of marker system. Most of the regular infantry and non-officer classes have a small ping or marker system, but officers and commanders have a wide array of pings or markers that they can put on the map or that can be seen once they've been placed anywhere, whether you're in the map mode or just using your binoculars or whatever you're using to ping something. Now, when you put down a ping, though, not everyone can see it. So if you're playing an infantry leader or a squad leader, your squad, the commander, and other officers will be able to see the pings. The other people in the other squads will not be able to see those pings. Now, that might seem a little convoluted or complex, so I'm going to put something up on screen to show you what you can actually see when you put something down and who actually sees it. Now what you see on screen is the marking system and the visibility that I pulled from the Hell at Loose eTool Discord page. Again, really nice page. I'll leave a link down in the description for you. And what you have is two different sides here. You've got the commander and their marks and officer and their marks. In the middle, you have the key here. So on the left, you have the commander. So if you're playing commander and you ping or mark something out to your team, this shows who can see it. So squad leaders can see move markers, tack markers, defend, you get the gist. While your whole team can see maybe enemy infantry, vehicle, tanks, you get the gist. We're on the officer, take that same logic. So I'm not going to spell every single one of them out. There's the key for you. You can see what pings people can see or what marks people can see. That way you have a true understanding of who can see what, and that can make a better communications decision in the future if you can keep track of this or, you know, screenshot view it whenever you need to. There's that too. Knowing how the map works and operates and how it loose is a big step towards having good situational awareness, at least on a tactical and potentially situational level. Once you understand how the map works and you can communicate that to your team, whether that be on a squad level or just a team slash officer level, you're doing a great job if once you've gotten good at that because communication is key in a game like Hell at Loose. 
And once you get better at the maps and you've learned them a little more, you can figure out what's what on the map, such as maybe barns, trenches, hills, and just every little other detail once you get more experience playing the game. But that's mostly just how the map should work in a nutshell. There may be little other things that maybe I didn't touch on. Please leave them down in the comments so everyone can see. But I hope you got something from this video. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.